uh, as far as the, uh, the the Maxwell stuff, look, I don't think we're going to get much of anything from Maxwell because, uh, at least publicly, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot. Be because the the what they're going her uh, going after Maxwell for what they can legit they're going after her for so much more. But you've got different factions after Maxwell right now. Uh, you, you've got the FBI. Uh, who wants to flip as many people as as they can get because the the, the FBI is going after Maxwell uh, not just for what Maxwell will give up when you know and I I saw this I saw this um, from experience uh, with the way the FBI did the the guys out at the um, Malheur refuge the FBI knows that when they pressure someone who knows information that will prompt some people who are who are have something to hide. It'll stress them out so bad they will come forward to the FBI and and give themselves up or give or out themselves or other people in exchange for some kind of immunity or something. So what the FBI is doing with with Maxwell and technically it's the SDNY, the uh, Southern District of New York that is prosecuting uh, Maxwell for the uh, the sex scandals. Uh, the child abuse the uh, and the trafficking that has some direct connection to New York because that's their jurisdiction. They can't go after things unrelated down in Little St. James or um, New Mexico unless they can tie it into something that happened in New York. So that's what they're doing publicly. The FBI, though, uh, you know, you go back all the way, J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI still keeps dirt on people. They still want to keep, because um, uh, that's how they flip you. That's how they, they, they turn people. You you just keep grooming people. You keep uh, increasing the number of um, files you have on people. And you use it when, when it's helpful. And so the FBI knows that it's not just what Maxwell will tell them. It's what the people who she has dirt on it's about what they think she will tell them and honestly a lot of these people don't know what maxwell has uh, she you know she ran this uh this operation with epstein a lot a long time ago or it started a long time ago uh them working together uh getting sexual compromise uh, on people uh so how much does she have it's unknown but a lot of people are going to be scared. The big people who have reason to be scared are like uh, Jean-Luc Brunel, uh, who was major sex trafficker, but he was he was one of the modeling agents, a globally known, famous French modeling agent. Uh, he was trafficking uh, a lot of girls, uh, primarily from Eastern Europe, people from Melania Trump's neck of the woods. Uh, and, and so Eps, and Epstein, uh, I've got I've got some of the old uh, uh, some of the girls who were running his house there in in Palm Beach were uh, screwing up, and even though they were right, they they kept mem memo pads by the phone in his Palm Beach place, uh, just you know about a mile and a half from Mar-a-Lago. Uh, and they would take messages, and they would write things coat in coded words. But they still were, you know, these are just young women. They they wrote enough down that they were giving stuff up that they shouldn't. And a lot of this stuff, these little memo notes got thrown in the trash. Unknown to Epstein at the time, at least early on, was that uh, uh, Joe Riccari, a uh, detective down in Palm Beach uh, PD, was um, had paid the local garbage man to be picking up Epstein's trash. Just go around, do like you normally do, pick up the trash. Uh, but instead of taking it to the dump, drop it off to the police. Uh, and they were going through and piecing these things together and uh, looking at this stuff. And and uh, there's a lot in there about uh, from, from Brunel and some of the others talking with Epstein or sending a message is about, hey, we've got this new girl from Russia, from uh, Slovakia, from Slovenia. We, we've got this one that you would probably like. 
Um, do you want to try her out? Do you want her to come uh, g- give you a massage or, or whatever? Um, so, so anyway, that's, that's, we know for certain that that's where a lot of the girls were coming from. So if you're, if you're Brunel, you're, you're, you may as well just stay in hiding for the rest of your life. Um, if you are someone like, well, uh, Les Wexner, the, the, the head of Victoria, the guy that re- just recently sold Victoria's Secret, but the guy who had made that famous, gave uh, Epstein a, a big start early on uh, managing his accounts. That guy's dirty. A lot of these Zionists, a lot of these, uh, and I don't mean Zionists just like, oh, philosophically, they like Israel. I mean, people that pour significant amounts of money into U.S. based operations to 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 increase the control of Israel and the bankers uh, over the U.S. political system. Those men are the ones who have the most to hide. They are not necessarily the ones who have the most to fear because they are so powerful and they do have their tentacles wrapped around so many powerful politicians. And, and, and it's, it's the same thing. You, if, if you are someone like Wex, uh, you know, Les Wexner and you've got dirt on whether it's Clinton or Trump or whoever, those are powerful allies to have on your side. So if they go to, uh, to try and flip you, you say, look, I've got to get out of jail free card. Uh, and, and the way they display it is by doing exactly what Epstein did back in the original uh, 2008 case, where once they get them in and they start looking at them and uh, soon, soon enough, you've got uh, the, the prosecutor down there, Alex Acosta, uh, who is the, the DA down there. He's suddenly working not just with uh, Jeff Epstein, uh, but you know, Epstein's big, big time attorneys, Alan Dershowitz, who had, was famous for having represented OJ Simpson. Um, uh, and also who has gone on to represent Donald Trump in the impeachment trial and, and other stuff. Uh, uh, I did not have a massage. Okay. Yeah, I had one, but it was okay. It wasn't bad. My wife was there. Ders- uh, Dershowitz, the nudist. Uh, but also he, uh, he brought in another big gun. You guys remember the impeachment of Bill Clinton, right? The guy who went after him wasn't, uh, the Bob Mueller of the, uh, of, of that impeachment trial was Kenneth Starr, who was conservative, uh, or at least he was neocon, uh, neocon Zionist. And so Epstein brought in Ken Starr as one of his attorneys as well, because Ken Starr has the political connections. Um, And and so Ken Starr and Alan Dershowitz use their connections and they just skip up above Alex Acosta. They go up the chain of command and soon Alex Acosta is being told to back off. And he has said that Alex Acosta said, I was told this guy is um, intelligence and to back off. And then what happens? What's the deal that Alex Acosta gets? Where did Alex Acosta go? I mean, after he, after he, who was supposed, he knows, Alex Acosta knows absolutely that Jeff Epstein was as dirty as they come, that he was raping children, that he was trafficking them, not just uh, around the USA, but internationally. Uh, Alex Acosta, who should have gone after him, suddenly backs off, works out this, you know, so-called sweetheart deal with Epstein and his team, uh, where Epstein basically gets to get out of jail free. And what becomes of Acosta? Well, the next president comes into, into office and Alex Acosta, who has no political experience, is brought up by Donald Trump and made the U.S. Uh, Secretary of... Um, uh, Wilbur Ross from uh, Rothschild Bank, uh, Trump made Secretary of Commerce. Um, was it? Oh, what? Uh, uh, Labor Secretary of Labor. I think it was Secretary of Labor, but but still a cabinet level position. Alex Acosta. So you've got Donald Trump, 
who's buddies with Epstein. We know this. He admitted it. Then then you've got Donald Trump in a, a dozen photos with Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, then you've got Donald Trump using Alan Dershowitz as his own personal attorney. Uh, you've, you've got Donald Trump bringing in uh, Wilbur Ross, who was also, uh, uh, who helped bail him out, uh, his business out, uh, years ago when Wilbur Ross was still with the Rothschild Bank. And then, uh, you know, he made Wilbur Ross put him in charge of the Commerce Department, writing basically... Uh, new NAFTA uh, fair trade law for the Rothschild syndicate, um, giving him free reign over that. Bring in Alex Acosta. Donald Trump brought in all of these people. And when, when you think about the hundreds of millions of people in the United States, of the, of the th roughly 350 million people, what are the odds? What are the, the odds that so many people deeply, deeply tied to Alex, uh, to uh, Jeff Epstein, are going to end up in that tiny little Trump administration, and beyond that, you know, it's just not just uh, Wilbur Ross and Alex Acosta, and now uh, we also had um, uh, Bill Barr, William Barr, his his uh, current Attorney General. Bill Barr was working as a CIA agent at the time that Bill Barr's father recruited. Jeff Epstein into to work at Dalton as a teacher. So Donald Trump is absolutely surrounded. Why do you think that is? I believe because I, I think that if I was a criminal who had a lot of dirt on me, I would want to do what they say, right? Keep your friends close, your enemies closer. You want to keep close to you those people who could burn you. You want to keep them close. You want to keep them fat, happy, well-fed, out of trouble. And so uh, when, when you've got someone who is as deep into the per sexual perversion as Roger Stone, it, it really will come as no surprise that Donald Trump is going to look at pardoning him. Because what if he doesn't? Well, then you go and you, you do the Michael Cohen kind of thing, Trump's uh, attorney who said, well, I'm going to give dirt on Trump if he's not going to pardon me. So Roger Stone will probably, I'm Roger, Roger Stone will, will, uh, he'll flip. I mean, he'll, he'll say, uh, he'll, he'll privately, if he hasn't already, he's, he will convey to Trump that, look, <laughs> work it out for me, get some deal for me, or I got some secrets on you. So when you have all this is Donald Trump is draining the swamp. I just don't, I, I just can't even begin to respect the people who take that position after they have heard the facts. Now, if you're someone who just, you, you have only the, the most passing interest in politics and really all you know is. Uh, the only attention you give is, is is the the duration it takes you to read like a meme on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And that's kind of the extent of what you know about politics. I can kind of excuse you for being dumb uh, in thinking that Donald Trump is this champion who is in there slaying the deep slate, uh, deep state dragon and draining the swamp and all that. You know, whatever. That's that's the best you can come up with. But if you sit here and you listen to me talk about this stuff or you come across it in some other source and you think, holy crap, Donald Trump, uh, Melania Trump, who remember Melania Trump was introduced to Donald by Jeffrey Epstein at Ghislaine Maxwell's Kit Kat Club. Absolute, uh, you know, dirty connection there. Uh, 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 Bill Barr, Jim Acosta, I am not Jim Acosta, but uh, Alex Acosta, all these people in there. If you hear all of that from me and you're like, ah, if that is true, I don't care. No big deal. I believe Donald Trump's draining the swamp. Is that If that is your conclusion, I can't respect that. Not whatsoever. Now, if you're someone who says, I don't know if I believe Jake, he could just be making this crap up. Um, and then you go research it and find out if what I'm saying is correct. One of two things, if you come to the conclusion, okay, yeah, he said that and it matters. Yes. If you do have a president surrounded by that many people involved with uh, child trafficking, 
yeah, there's there's something not right there. If that's your conclusion, cool. <laughs> or anything like that. But if you come away saying, as a Christian, I just reject all of that. I don't care what the facts are. I don't care what the information is. I don't care what being can, can be vetted or verified. I know that Donald Trump is King Cyrus because Paula White or, or Franklin Graham or whoever the you know neocon Zionist uh, fake Christian pastor of the day uh, told me uh, that Donald Trump is the second coming of Jesus Christ or whatever. Zero respect for you. Because that's just stupid. <laughs> that's just dumb. If you don't like what my pal Jake Morphonio says, it's obvious you can't handle the truth. Go back to CNN, you mush-brained morons. <laughs>